So good afternoon. Um, I'm glad you're all here. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Drupal 8 mobile initiative. Um, we, Lewis and I really want to make this a, uh, an interactive discussion. Um, you get to uh, talk about uh, things that you want to see in Drupal 8, uh, things that you want to help with in Drupal 8, um, problems you're seeing in Drupal 7 mobile experiences and, and mobile solutions. And uh, we'll be talking about sort of the goals of, of the initiative so far. And I'd just like to say that the, the goals of the initiative are, are driven by the community needs and by community participation. So um, I'm John Alvin Wilkins. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Lewis Nyman. I work for Capgemini. I'm a designer and a front-end developer. Yeah, I suppose I should say who I work for, too. I work for Palantir.net. <laughs> um, they're a Chicago-based company, a uh, great group of people. Um, so the Drupal 8 mobile initiative um, is a specific initiative within the Drupal 8 sphere. There's a, there are uh, let's see how many, there's about six initiatives right now for Drupal 8 um, dealing with the various sort of um, features, key features that uh, Dries would like to see in Drupal 8. And as you saw from his keynote on Tuesday, he's uh, really, really wants Drupal 8 to be mobile friendly. Um, and that's one of my goals too. And uh, when you start thinking about what does that mean, you, you have to look at sort of um, how mobile solutions are being built right now. And uh, there are a lot of different ways of doing stuff. There's native apps, there's uh, HTML5 web apps, uh, there are sort of the uh, the uh, mobile site, desktop site, switching back and forth between domains. There's responsive design. Um, there's also uh, something Luke Rubluski uh, coined as the RES, uh, responsive design plus server side components. Um, Drupal 8 should be able to support all of those. There's no reason we should pick, choose one over the other um, because we want it to be a generalized platform that, that can work for anybody, right? Um, and when you start looking at the sort of things that we need in Drupal 8, the, basically it comes down to uh, we need web services, HTML5, and those are actually underneath existing initiatives. There's a web services initiative and core context, which is, you've probably heard it called Whiskey. Uh, you saw Larry Garfield in the blue shirt on the video on Dries' keynote. He's running that, and uh, Jason is running the HTML5 initiative. Um, we're working very closely with the other initiatives because our, our goals sort of overlap so the only way that Drupal 8 will succeed as a mobile-friendly uh, platform is if all of our initiatives succeed. So, um, so those first two points are under different initiatives, but feel free to talk about anything mobile. Um, because like I said, we're working together. So um, even if it's not technically within the bit that I'm leading, it doesn't really matter. I'll talk to Larry or talk to JC and we'll get it all sort of sorted out. So uh, the things that are actually under the mobile initiative are responsive themes, converting all the existing themes to be responsive. Uh, front end performance, because it's such, so crucial to having a mobile, uh, a mobile solution. Um, and, and documentation, this is one because mobile is so new, uh, everybody's sort of learning stuff right now. They're still trying to figure stuff out. And one great way to participate as a new person in the mobile sphere is as you figure stuff out, to write it down um, so we've started a documentation guide on Drupal.org for anything mobile. And it, it's got native app stuff. It has you know, web app, responsive design, um, front end performance. All of that stuff is on there. And um, you know, anybody of any experience level can contribute to documentation. Um, and then the last thing is actually the, one of the most, the, this is the first thing that you see when you install a Drupal site is the admin side. The admin screens are setting it up. So I'll yeah, so. Was, a big part of my work has been on the admin interface of Drupal. And so as well as making Drupal a good framework or a good tool for making mobile apps, it should also be a good mobile app in itself. So we've been doing a lot of work rethinking Drupal's admin interface so it's usable on small screens and touch screen devices. So when we release Drupal 8, you can offer this to your clients as a CMS that they can use anywhere they want. And it's also great for us because I, I was always in loads of situations where my freelance clients were emailing me or texting me saying, I've broken something, you know, please fix it now. And I wasn't always at my computer, so that was back in Drupal 6 when I was trying to use a tiny little phone 
to make some changes, and it was an absolute pain. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I really come around on that, the, the mobile-friendly admin side, because at first I was like, wow, that sounds kind of hard. I'm not sure if we necessarily need to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah. it really, it's the first thing you see. And, and just like with uh, Drupal 7, where we replaced all the, the crappy things that were in Drupal 6, um, because it was the you know, first thing as a designer you saw when you installed Drupal 7, the themes were much better. Same thing with the administrative interface for Drupal 8. We want that to be a mobile-friendly experience right out of the box and go, hey, look at this. This is nice. First impressions matter. So that's why um, it's important that it's part of this, this, the Drupal 8 solution. Yeah, and it's actually been really interesting if you approach the design of the CMS from a mobile-first perspective because it's kind of forcing us to rethink Drupal's interface with more simplicity. Which and some of those like some of those efforts have actually fallen back into the desktop design as well. Yeah. Um, I, I I just want to point out that the the initiative homepage basically is on groups.drupal.org slash mobile slash drupal dash eight there, um, and that's where there's a list of like all of the well there's a, there's a link to like the documentation page. There's a strategy page there as well. There's uh, the list of all the actual issues and the issue queue that are related to the mobile initiative. Um, and we have uh, postings about regular office hours and uh, IRC meetings that we have. Um, but I, I really want people to like jump up now and, and start asking questions about and are making comments about your mobile experiences in Drupal 7 and also things that you want to see or questions you have about the initiative. So. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> whoops, you are right. Let me fix that slide right now. Groups banner. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a microphone in the center. That might help you. Well, I can repeat the question for because we're recording. <laughs> so the question was, what's your definition of a mobile device? Um, and where did tablets fit in the equation? So <laughs> you want to go for it? <laughs> that's a really interesting question because the term mobile could be interpreted by you know, so many people as different things. Uh, it used to mean a mobile phone, but the definition of that keeps changing every year. Or we could interpret it to mean a mobile device, one that you carry around with you. And if you think of it in a broader definition like that, then it includes you know, phones, tablets, e-readers, really anything that, laptop. <laughs> well, yeah, it have to, has to work on them as well. But um, there's really so many factors that affect devices nowadays, it's really hard to put them in classes like, this is a mobile, this is a tablet, because there's so much in between those two definitions. Yeah, I, I think um, as far as the, in the initiative goes, we're looking at making sure that Drupal works with um, you know, different size screens, so smaller screens than, than we've traditionally been sort of targeting, as well as touch interfaces. And, and those sort of uh, device capabilities that we're targeting can apply to whatever the actual device happens to be, right? Because it's important that you sort of think about device capabilities instead of actual devices, so. Right, especially because Drupal 8 isn't gonna come out for another year. Yeah and then its life, a slice span is gonna be you know, at least another five, right? So we can't really be thinking about what devices do now. We just have to think about what they could do or just do as much feature detection as possible. You don't have to come up, you can, you can just sort of, yeah. Uh, the back end of, of Drupal is very sort of heavy, the, the stack, and that the back end performance is also a, a big consideration. So I, I, I will agree with you and also sort of counter too, um, in that when you look at sort of the traditional waterfall um, model, uh, graphs of um, uh, loading a particular web page, um, there's you know so many seconds for how long it takes for the HTML to load, and then all of the assets 
the images, the JavaScript, the CSS, those always take much longer than that initial HTML page because it's just one HTTP request for the HTML page and it's multiple HTTP requests so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of back and forth between the servers and it takes much longer for that stuff to go out. So that's why um, it's actually a, an, an easier way to optimize your site is to uh, focus on front end performance, you know, it, it, but this is a part where I agree with you now. <laughs> that was the counter and now is the, here comes the agreement. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm about the web services that actually bring the whole stuff. Yes. That's the yeah. So the the web services initiative is absolutely looking at that issue because uh, they agree that the, the Drupal stack is is very heavy and uh, has a, the the bootstrap in, in Drupal seven is is complicated. Um, I, I don't fully understand it. So um, they're working on revamping that in order to be able to basically request what we what we now think of as a page you would be able to request basically pieces of a page and be able to get that much quicker um, and that's part of the the conversion to symphony um, using the Sym symphony components so um, i'm hoping the web services initiative will be will succeed and improve uh, massively the uh, back end performance of drupal uh, in the in the white back there sorry yeah. Did, did you say background images or response? Or adaptive, adaptive images. images. Okay, go ahead. Yes, no, I come, uh, sorry, the, so the, for the people watching the video, um, the, the comment, the, the question first was, um, is there any, uh, are we looking at adaptive images for Drupal 8? And uh, then there was also a comment about, um, oh, and a uh, question about whether or not the initiative included Drupal.org improvements in order to make it uh, mobile friendly, because the Drupal.org website is not currently very friendly and, uh, um, he commented saying that, you know, um, Dries' comment about nobody posts screenshots of iPhones. Well, nobody posts screens of iPhones because iPhone users can't use Drupal.org uh, comments very well. Um, I've, I've, I've tried that, uh, tried to go through the issue queue in, in the Drupal 8 initiative and like use it from a phone. It's really hard. Um, and uh, I, um, technically it's not part of the initiative because um, we're focused on Drupal 8 code and not Drupal infrastructure code, but it's something, it's, it's one of those sort of tangential things that I feel like talking about Drupal 8 uh, mobile initiative sort of kicks off a discussion about Drupal.org infrastructure, and I've seen some sort of action being started to take, so you can actually find there's a, there, is, there are a couple issues right now on the issue queue for Drupal.org infrastructure talking about improving the, uh, you know, being able to like post comments on issues from your phone, for example, um, making the entire site more responsive. Um, I feel like we can get the, the issue queue stuff done a bit quicker than the entire, make the entire theme responsive, right? But, um, and, and then with adaptive images, um, yeah, we're definitely looking at that. Um, adaptive images is a really complex problem. If you look at the, uh, the web design community in general, it, this is a big discussion and, and there's no perfect solution, right? So uh, Jason Grigsby gives a great discussion of the problem space of adaptive images. So if you're not familiar with uh, all of the sort of cookie and JavaScript and browser prefetching issues about around images, if you go to cloud4.com slash blog, um, you can find the, the um, post that he did last, I wanna say November-ish timeframe about responsive images um, that are excellent that describe the problem space. Um, so with Drupal 8, basically we're watching sort of the development of Drupal 7 contrib modules for responsive images. We're also watching the greater design uh, web design community to see what solutions they come up with 
Um, I'm part of the, uh, there's a W3C group now talking about responsive images um, around the, the picture tag is proposal. Um, uh, we're, while we're watching everything and we're gonna try to pick the best solution for Drupal 8. Um, right now, I, of the solutions that have been proposed, um, Matt Wilcox has an adaptive images solution which I think is the, would be the best fit for Drupal in, in the way that Drupal works. Um, so there might be other solutions that work better for other types of systems, but I think that one would work best for Drupal. Um, that's what I'm kind of leaning towards, but it's, it's a little early too, but it's something that if people want to start working on that, um, to give us a leg up on those particular issues, that would be great. So like, if do you want, <laughs> um, let me jump over to, I don't know, wait. Can, you that? Can I just quickly jump to yeah, yeah, yeah. back to the Drupal.org question? Um, if you've seen the Drupal Association's roadmap for this year, it's on their list to make Drupal.org responsive. So it's probably going to be one of those things where they pay an agency to just get it done. But I can't speak for them, obviously. Yeah. And I'd like to say, if there's stuff that you guys would love to participate in, we're actually doing a mobile initiative sprint um, on Friday. Uh, and it's actually in this room. <laughs> so, and it starts at nine, which you, if you've been out partying the night before, you don't have to show up till noon, but you know, <laughs> we'll be here uh, most of the day, so. Um, oh. Uh, have you given any thought to responsive pages? I've tried playing around with it, and it's like this, and everything is so visible, where are you at? Yeah, so funny you should ask, you know, I'll let Newest talk, you were just looking um, at this. Yeah, so it's, Responsive tables is so dependent on the content you have in them. There's been lots of examples of reflowing the layout or hiding some of the columns. But that only works for certain kinds of data. In some situations, some people have said that it's better to show the content in a graph or in a list format. So in some cases, the table markup is only going to get you so far, especially for smaller screens. So Possibly some of the solutions here might have to be in JavaScript or server side to completely reformat the data to be more friendly for smaller screens, but it really does depend on the content you're showing. Have you given any thought for responsive like admin side of Drupal? Yeah. Yeah, so the permissions page hmm. is a bit like a black hole <laughs> on desktop. So for mobile, we, I'm kind of leaving that near the end. <laughs> and do everything else first, because if I get drawn into that, then nothing else will get done. We'll spend the whole year trying to work that page out. Um, but for other pages, we, I mean, we have like listings of content or lists of menus or content types. They're all set in tables. And I'm actually thinking that really we can probably set them in ULs and get away with it. By the way, if there's any UX people here and you would love a challenge, um, we have this permissions page that really needs some love. <laughs> uh, next here. So the question was that uh, a lot of the newer phones support HTML5, um, which are great as far as you know, having nice sort of rich uh, widgets, et cetera, for uh, applications. Um, and the question was, what about sort of older phones that don't support HTML5 or older feature phones? So th the nice thing that, that, do you want to talk about that? You well, I was just going to say progressive enhancement, progressive enhancement, progressive enhancement yeah. all the way. Right. So we're going to design a nice interface for touchscreen devices, but it's all going to be done conditionally. So we're only going to load a touch-friendly interface if there's actually touchscreens available to take advantage of it. Otherwise, we're, we're just going to keep it really basic for dumb phones. Yeah, in, in addition to that, though, the, the HTML5, uh, the, the creators of the HTML5 spec have been keeping that in mind. So in any HTML5 element that you use is sort of, especially form widgets, they are all backwards compatible with old browsers in that if, if you pick a, um, a, a date HTML5 picker 
um, it'll just revert to like an, a, I think so it's a text input, area or something like basic that. Basic text input. Yeah. It just becomes a basic text area on any browser that doesn't understand it because it's a, it's a type. So it's input type, I forget what it is, date, right? So it, if it doesn't understand the type, it still displays the widget, but it just uses its default, which is text. It does a text input. Yeah, so it's, it's really great that the design of the HTML5 spec was made to gracefully degrade for devices or browsers that don't understand it. So luckily Drupal doesn't really have to do a whole lot, except for the progressive enhancement that, he, that, that Lewis was talking about. I thought I saw some other hands, but I've lost who was holding up their hands. You're just drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, let me talk about briefly about uh, some of the responsive stuff that we're working on. Um, we've uh, already dropped uh, Garland from Drupal 8. It's no longer part of Drupal 8. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so that means that the, the themes that are left are uh, Stark, Seven, and um, Bartik. Um, and we're going to be converting all of those to be responsive. Um, the first one we're tackling, of course, is Stark because it's our, you know, sort of lean uh, theme that only has like a little bit of layout CSS. So that's what we, we've just uh, finished doing that. It's sort of in the RTBC queue now, um, waiting for some uh, sort of core committers to review it and, and get it into core. But uh, uh, Luke Rubluski actually did a post last week about uh, multi-device layout patterns that he saw. Um, and uh, it, it turns out that, uh, that this is the pattern that's going to be for Stark. Um, so basically you've got uh, you know, your main content here, uh, first sidebar, second sidebar, and then it gets it smaller, the, the second sidebar drops down to here. Uh, when, it's, when the second sidebar drops down to here, um, rather than just having the blocks be super wide across, which is effectively a three column grid, we are laying out the, the blocks that are in that region in a three column grid. So there'll be first block, second block, third block, fourth block, fifth block, sixth block, you know, on down like that. Um, and then this is just regular sort of mobile single column there. Um, this is, um, it, it's, it's sort of neat to see the work that we did be uh, fit in nicely with what Luke was noticing in the, the responsive layouts. Um, but um, I actually gave a talk yesterday about the limitations of region-based layouts. Um, and uh, there's only so much you can do from a, from a theme that is going to be sort of distributed um, to end users where you don't know what the end user is actually going to what, they don't know what, we don't know what content they're actually gonna put into those themes, right? So the most ideal way of doing the responsive site is, um, is really dependent on what type of content you have in your sidebars, for example. What type of content um, do you have uh, everywhere, right? So um, we're sort of stuck with trying to do a sort of generic responsive layout that's based on regions. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I talked about how, yesterday, how you can, if you're doing a custom theme for your own site, it, you, it's possible to do basically field-based layouts, um, which are much more interesting, um, but can be really tailored to the specific needs of the site. And um, the sort of next step in my thinking is that I don't know how you could do field-based layouts when you don't know what kind of fields the particular site is going to have when you don't know the u end use case. So I, I would love if, if you know, everybody, everybody here who's interested in responsive design started thinking about that issue as well. Or, you know, maybe I'm just over overthinking it. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any comments about, about this pattern or, uh, or doing region-based uh, responsive layouts? Sorry, what was that? How do, oh, yeah. 
Um, it reacts to right to left in the traditional way that, that websites should do right to left uh, in that the entire layout is flipped for, you know, in addition to the language being right to left, the layout gets flipped right to left. Um, that's, the, that's the way we wrote it for Stark already. So it has that built in. Was it about RTL? <laughs> so, well, actually, in this first one, uh, this this is the first sidebar. The first sidebar would actually be over here, and the second sidebar would be over here. Because as you're reading right to left, this is the first sidebar, and that's the second sidebar, right? So, and then here, uh, the content would be over here. The first sidebar would be here, and then the second sidebar would still be in the same place. You're right, and the uh, so the the blocks instead of being from left to right laid out in this three column grid would also be right to left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Um, are you planning on having a, a user and that kind of stuff built in, or are you building a whole new set of things that are going to be? Uh, so the the question, sorry, ba sorry, I got the first part of it, but then I'm missing the second part. Oh. Um, so the question was, uh, do we put the media queries, bake them into the CS, CSS, or are they um, some otherwise, you know, exposed inside the settings, or, or um, well, I guess it would have to be through settings, because like o Omega and uh, adaptive themes expose the actual breakpoints inside the settings, correct? Yeah. So. So there, there are two issues there. Um, should we have some sort of settings in Drupal 8 core for, for breakpoints and um, you know, how, how's best to do that? Um, Stark is designed to show off Drupal's default markup. That's, that's what its basic purpose is. The layout has always been just to show you, you know, is an example basically of how you can lay out your site. It wasn't really meant to be something that's super flexible or, or reusable. You can reuse it. You can mo modify it to do what you want, um, but that wasn't that isn't sort of the the goal of having the layout for Stark. So having settings for Stark for where the breakpoints are, I don't think is a particularly. It's interesting. So the, the the comment was, you know, could you do it in a way such that Stark's work can be sort of reused for Bartik? Um, I hadn't really given that much thought. The themes are so so different um, that um, I'm not sure. There's not really a whole lot of work in Stark, so I think that the amount of CSS is in Bartik already. You basically have to look start with that, the way it is now, and start with that code rather than try and reuse some of the stuff that's in Stark. So, um, so in, in regards to the settings, um, one of the problems from a front-end performance issue is that if you have your media query inside the link tag or inside the media attribute of the, you know, at import, um, that's a bad performance hit. And the reason for that is because it breaks it conflicts with Drupal CSS aggregation because it can only aggregate files that have the same media type. So each media query that's in a media attribute um, means a separate aggregate file and a separate HTTP request. So the way that we've handled it for Stark is that yes, the, the media query is actually baked into the layout.css file um, because uh, there's no performance hit. So um, putting a setting in, we would have to look at, um, we'd have to figure out a way to avoid that performance problem. So.
just a second, let me, let me recap first and then you can ask a question because it's just for the video. So, so I don't forget everything she said. Um, so uh, he uh, pointed out that the, um, a lot of times looking at this region-based layout, if you put navigation in the second sidebar, um, when you start uh, getting to some of these other responsive designs where the, um, the navigation basically drops below everything else, it can really sort of wreak havoc with the user experience. Um, and uh, make it difficult uh, for a user. And, and some mobile sites have a button at the top that allow you to, to get to the navigation easily. And now the question. Yeah, so the, so the question is what, what solutions can we come up with in Drupal 8? Um, I would love to have uh, you to think about that and maybe help come up with some of the solutions. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about a little bit is that we do have a, um, a skip to navigation uh, button that's in all of our markup. It's in the html.tpl file. Um, right now it's basically hidden unless it gets keyboard focus. Um, you could write some CSS so that it was exposed as a button to jump to the navigation for mobile sites. Um, I really like that solution because it's 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 a sort of an accessibility and mobile win at the same time. So um, that would be one way that you could do it. And uh, as far as start goes, um, I don't. the The issue is when you add a uh, menu to a, a region, um, the the markup that comes on HTML.tpl doesn't necessarily know what what's the name of the menu and which menu is important and so it doesn't know which block it should be jumping to. So that's really tricky for a, a theme that's distributed and we don't know what blocks are going into the actual regions. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, so the, 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 the question, the, so the, the comment was, could you put the, the, um, the second sidebar, re instead of below it, put it up at the top? Is that what you were saying? Okay. Um, there are some interesting things that you can do with responsive layouts um, that are not necessarily obvious. Um, if uh, I would recommend, actually, I, I, I gave like a, maybe talked about this for about 20 minutes in my session yesterday. When the video comes out, watch that. Um, it should help you sort of figure out, or help to figure out um, sort of responsive layout things. Because these three elements, uh, this first sidebar, second sidebar, and content are uh, next to each other uh, in the source order, um, there are some things you can do to, to push those around and um, make them uh, appear to be out of order even though it has a certain order in the HTML. Um, I've talked about um, when you're creating basically rows inside your grid, um, each, each group of elements that are in a single row uh, should be next to each other in the source order. Um, and so, uh, since these are all three next to each other, you can rearrange them within that row. Um, the, the thing that you can't do um, well, unless you like use some fancy. It's very tricky to try and get CSS to almost disobey the HTML source order. Um, I think I've seen a couple of them using like display table and display table header to try and move stuff above to the top, which is you know a bit of a hack. But I think the um, the flexbox spec for CSS three is really powerful and. Once that's fully supported, then you can do some really powerful stuff with it. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's another option. So, um, the, the 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 
more complicated issue would basically be that we still don't know what blocks and what regions are most important for the particular user who's using the theme. So we can't, we can't, you know, it's, it's just too difficult to like know. There, it's possible like if you wanted to have like multiple layouts that the user could pick from, um, if somebody wanted to work on that as an issue for a Stark, so you could like say, oh, I want to use this kind of responsive layout or this kind of responsive layout. Um, I would totally be up for that. I would need to like argue a little bit with a web chick, I think. But I'd be willing to argue with her in order to get that in. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> that's the, the question was, do, do I mean the, the mobile user when I talk about um, what most important or the developer, what things are most important? Um, uh, that's an excellent reminder that you should always think about your users first, right? It's the, what the users think is most important that should be sort of near the top in your source order. Um, those are the most important things. That's why they came to your site. Um, but from a um, site builder standpoint, the, the theme doesn't, the, we're gonna s assume that the site builder knows to respect the users. <laughs> so as, as a, you know, as a sort of generic theme, uh, we have no way of knowing what blocks, what important things get put into what places. Um, because we, we come with a default uh, set of blocks, like the, the main content and, you know, some, some menus and stuff like that. But the site builder can move that stuff around. And that doesn't necessarily, it won't necessarily be where Drupal initially places it. So that's, that's the sort of crux of the matter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm misunderstood then. Oh. Okay, yeah, I did misunderstand. Okay, so you, you're asking whether I meant for the settings of the layout settings, whether it was per user or, um, actually, actually what I was referring to was uh, per site builder, I mean per site, right? So the, the site builder says, oh, I wanna use this layout for the site rather than you know the default layout. And that would be based on, you know, because the site builder knows where did I stick this stuff? Which layout, responsive layout, makes more sense for my particular site? Yes, that, sorry, yes. So. I know you guys have more comments. Tell me, tell us about some of the Drupal 7 stuff that you've done that you think is interesting or, or that you think is really painful or hard. Because um, knowing the things that are causing you pain um, is really helpful um, because then we can, you know, put some band-aids on it or, or, you know, fix it or whatever, <laughs> right? Um, I, I'll just throw up there uh, one of the things that, that I find painful is the field TPL. <laughs> um, it, it's, it'd be really nice to have a much leaner markup coming out of Drupal um, because that's a, that's a front-end performance problem. Um, too many markup means extra K of downloading. So um, I think there's a lot of improvement that we can do on this. Um, if, the, if there are people who would like to uh, work on this particular problem, um, I, uh, I would say take a look at the, the fences module in Drupal 7 and see what that kind of does. And you can certainly try to um, maybe make, make its solution better or work on your own solution and, and maybe we can sort of solve this sort of field markup problem in Drupal 8. I would like, I would, I would love to see some, some solution for that in Drupal 8. Technically, that'd be part of the HTML5 initiative, but like I said, we're, we're not really worried about which issue goes in which initiative. It's, these are mobile issues and let's get them solved. Uh, so let me do the, the question first. So the, the comment was in, in, in uh, Drupal, there's nested menus. 
um, and how how do you sort of best support a you know, user interface in, inside mobile devices? Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So I, from a lot of the studies we've done for the admin interface, it's really common in mobile OSs to have nested navigation using either accordions that hide and show the sub items or actually having separate screens for each one. So those are some of the techniques they use to communicate that information. Yeah, yeah. That's really common on, on iOS is a great example. They use separate screens for each uh, nested set of items. Um, are, are there people here, uh, UX people or just sort of uh, usability people that want to um, talk about the the admin interface and improving that and uh, you know you've got a, um, a, a yeah a prototype of what the Drupal 8 uh, backend might look like why don't we show that Nona? yeah okay let's do that so I can be begin this with a quick story about a year ago, when I was really young and naive, I, um, I wasn't really into core development or anything like that. And at the time, responsive web design was cool. So I was like, oh, I know. Let's make the seventh thing responsive. That'd be fun. So when we got into it, we actually realized that the admin interface in Drupal was really bad on mobile phones. So instead of jumping into the issue queue, we decided to take a step back. And in DrupalCon London, we did a usability sprint where we got tons of devices together and we saw where the pain points were. And we got a lot of, a lot of bad stuff out of that. And since then, what we've been trying to do is instead of committing issues into core, is design a prototype in static HTML of how it could work on small and touchscreen devices. And the benefits to that is that we don't have to write a lot of PHP to change the interface which is great because I suck at PHP. So it's really easy to contribute. And it kind of avoids having bike share discussions on how we implement a certain feature. We can just focus on how it works to the user. And the other good thing about having a, a proper usable prototype is people can get it out on their phones and they can use it and they can touch it and swipe through it and see how it feels. So this, this here is the third iteration of the prototype which focuses on just navigating to the page you want to get to. So the first thing you'll notice is that the toolbar doesn't really have any links in, because we found that it just collapses down, gets really big, and it takes up about half the page for, um, <laughs> for mobile users. So what we have in here is um, the title of the page you're on, and we have a link that says a minister. When you click on that, it takes you to the top of the administration menu. So you see content, structure, appearance, people, and when you click down through these, you drill down through the interface. So I thought that was a lot simpler, and we made the, the each menu item really big and touchable, because currently there was, I think there was maybe this, uh, this one word here that you could click on to get, to get down to the next layer. So we made this whole area uh, clickable and touch friendly. And then from there, to get back up, you'd have to press the back button to go all the way back up to the top. So what we decided to do was instead of making users to um, forcing them to click this one button down here, we made the whole screen a, a target. So if you want to get back up to this previous page, you just pull and swipe, which is a lot better because instead of tapping one button down here, you've got the whole screen to touch and you can actually move a lot quicker than just tapping one button like that. Well, the, the back button is a you know part of the device UI, so it it's inconsistent across devices as well in well, that too. placement. So. And there was some discussion at first about having the back button in the top toolbar because they do that a lot on iOS, but it kind of seemed like a waste of space because a lot of mobile browsers have these back buttons. And you, well, you can also swipe forward as well to go back down from where you were. So what we also did is we, instead of having all the Yeah. 
Yeah, so it tells you what page you're on at the top of the toolbar. It has the title. Maybe it's not completely consistent, but when you go down, it tells you. So, so the question was, how do, how do you know whether, when you're on a particular page and you, you, and you, swipe, you swipe forward back to, how does it know how? I, I, it's, it's just going through the browser history when you're swiping forward, right? Is that right? Yeah, when, when you're swiping like that, it's literally the same as pressing the back button. Is that what you mean? It, yeah, so you yeah. swipe back and then you swipe forward. It's just using the browser history to go forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't swipe forward. You, you can't you swipe forward into the future. It yeah. won't know where you want to go. Right. So. Yeah. No. <laughs> the question was, um, can, you, uh, can you get all the way back to the top of the administration if you're in a deep menu and... Somebody said to swipe very hard. <laughs> <laughs> so no, at the moment you would have to swipe six times. But that you know there are improvements to be made on this prototype. And if you have any suggestions, that's great. You should come to the sprint on Friday. So are you for, for content creation, I'm going to repeat the question. So content creation is there going to be a special um, a special mobile setup versus the, the desktop. So it's an interesting use case uh, to think about, maybe having a specific UI for certain roles, but for the, this like web interface, we kind of have to think about every possible role because we can't assume what the user, um, what the user will want to do. But in the future, once we have this working really well, like, maybe we can explore making native apps that have like, very specific use cases. I know there's an iOS app at the moment called Drupad, and that only gives you a handful of functions or features to use, like content creation. And you can exclude all the other ones because they don't have to be accessible for this one application. So it's, it's, it's something that I'm happy to discuss in the initiative, but I think that the back-end web interface has to do everything. Yeah, the, the goal is really to have everything be mobile friendly, including the permissions page. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, and the because it page as well. It doesn't make sense to assume that the mobile user doesn't want to do everything, right? So we don't want to limit it based on faulty assumptions. Yeah, we can't um, limit Lewis, it. Anybody can look at this prototype, right? What's the URL for that? Right, oh, I should type it down. So it's nav3.d8mux.org. I'll see if I can pull up a... Mm. How big can I make my text? <laughs> what is this? Can you increase the font on that at all? <laughs> oh, it's a pretty limited feature set, isn't it? There we go, font size. What's that? Way bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. <laughs> Plus about eight more times, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you guys can try out this prototype. So it's available. you can go to it right now on your mobile yeah. device. You can try it out, but be warned that it's, it could be buggy because it's not a, it's not a, fu a fully featured piece of code and some of my JavaScript does really suck, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so the the comment was that in, in Drupal, it's really hard to ad administer large numbers of users on the user administration page because there's no easy way to search for a user by their username. Um, and I assume you want to know how we're fixing that for Drupal 8. <laughs> yeah, so one of the benefits of looking at the interface from a mobile perspective is it makes those problems so much more obvious. You've got a large amount of users. Yeah. 
And so so, the, so the, he was commenting that he, you know, on a small site with only like 100 users, um, you can sort of manage it okay on a desktop by just going through a couple of pages. But with 1,000 users, it's almost impossible. Yeah, it's tricky. And I would say in a mobile device, even 100 users is difficult. Yes, yeah, so you might have noticed this search button on every page. So what we also found is it does take a while to swipe around to get back up to the top to find the right menu item to get down to where you want to go. So we actually implemented this global search function. And you can type any page, or no, I say it's the beginning letters for any page in the admin interface. Like if I type C, it will show me every page that I can get to in the admin interface. So it's just like a global search in Drupal, almost like you have Spotlight in iOS or in OS X. But what it also does is it doubles up as a, a local search. So you can see here, it shows you on the current page this user that begins with C. If we had thousands of users, it would show you every user that began with C. Or if you want to get more specific, you can type in here, you know, C, L, U, and until, until you find just that one user. Was it using? Uh, some really badly hacked JavaScript that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> but ideally, um, well, it yeah, does <laughs> nice, it, it looks <laughs> like it works really well, but I'm sure it'll break very easily if you try and do anything else with it. Sorry? No, so this is part of the static HTML This prototype. is static HTML, so. and this is why it's great, because then I don't have to know how to do it properly in order to show this interface off to everyone. But it's going to be part of our um, work in the issue queue to get this functionality into Drupal core. Yeah. Yeah. It, what was it? Oh, user finder in Drupal 7. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I'm not, not sure. Um, yeah, um, the, the, you know, like it, like I said earlier, the, the goal is to have all the administrative interface converted to be mobile friendly. The things that we're going to start with first are going to be um, content creation and content administration. And when I say content, what I'm specifically talking about from a sort of code sto code standpoint is entities. So like nodes, content types, you know, uh, creating content, but also users are also entities. So user administration and and user creation is sort of part of what I consider content administration and content creation because users are also entities. So, um, well, Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that, that Lewis here has been working on is, is the, the navigation, of course, is essential. It's, it's got to be actually f first because you can't get to any of the content creation pages and before you have navigation. So, so. I disagree uh, completely. So it, the question was, you're not going to create content on your mobile device. That's part of the assumptions they use. I would love to rate, create uh, draft posts when I'm on the bus. Oh, draft. Oh, that's a new yeah, <laughs> that's content creation. <laughs> oh, I guess it's important to know that. It's a question. Oh, here. sorry. Yeah, so, so for the video listeners, um, the, 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 the comment in question was basically, you know, as we look at all of the, the administrative interfaces for mobile users, um, what sort of, how are we uh, looking at sort of the desktop picture and improving that as well at the same time? Um, it, do you want to? Yeah, so um, like I said before, one of the benefits of taking a view on the interface on mobile is 
and makes some problems that we have already in the desktop interface so much more obvious. So optimistically, I'd say we have 100% rain on changing the desktop interface as well, if it makes the mobile interface easier. Or who knows, it might, might even make the desktop interface a lot better to use as well. Yeah, we had, um, if you remember the D7 UX project, um, some of the community members that were working on that, um, Bohan and uh, Roy Schulten, um, they are doing, you know, they're continuing with their work and improving the administrative interface um, for Drupal 8, and um, they have, you know, it's, I'm not sure what, the, is it D8 UX or something like that, or? Uh, yeah, D8 plan. UX. Yeah, D8 yes. UX, but they're working closely with us because they recognize the implications of, of mobile for improving the desktop. So, like I said, we're trying to make everything better and the, the, these sort of different initiatives um, overlap a lot and we're basically we're all working together. So, so um, exactly, Roy was actually at the sprint that we had Sunday and Monday before the DrupalCon and helped out a lot and, and it, was, it was great. Um, so definitely the desktop experience is gonna improve because we're taking mobile into consideration. Back here. Yeah, so the comment was that he, he likes to think of desktop as being a progressive enhancement of the base, uh, base functionality. Yeah, I completely agree. That's how I love to think of it, as a, a larger screen, as an additional capability. Like you would think of JavaScript as an additional capability. So if we design for a small screen first, then we'll be <laughs> in a much better place. So, so the right. So the question was a bit about uh, the politics of getting particular changes into core and whether or not we can do it. So the the nice thing about you know these sort of official initiatives that uh, are put together in the in the Drupal community um, is that uh, you know basically there's no official initiatives that are created without Dries saying I want this right. So the mobile initiative is because Dries says. He wants Drupal to be mobile friendly. And it's up to us to figure out what that means. And um, so, yeah, we've got some, some heavyweights who are in favor of making Drupal 8 mobile friendly. I think we have a pretty good shot of, of changing sort of the desktop experience. And, and, you know, the people that have traditionally been working on the desktop, um, they're also on board. Uh, like I said, the, the D7 UX people, they're doing D8 UX and they're, t they, they're loving um, improving the desktop from the mobile. So I actually don't think there's gonna be that hard to, from a political standpoint, of, you know, sort of fighting or issue queue back and forth. I think the hard part is actually just doing the UX work, uh, you know, finding the right people to start implementing the UX work as PHP and HTML. Um, and I would love to see everybody who, who has those skills to get involved. Um, again, we have a, a, another sprint. Um, on Friday, we should actually be in this room. Um, and I think I'm gonna take one last question. Uh, so the question was, uh, it looked that the, the D8, uh, nav3.d8mux.org uh, prototype looked great on an iPhone and does it scale to an iPad? Um, I don't know, have you tried it on an iPad? <laughs> yeah, uh, find somebody who has an iPad and try it on there. Um, you know, this is a prototype. The code. Yeah, yeah, Al's working on it right now. <laughs> Why don't you go look, out, look over there? And again, this is a prototype too, so. Yeah, and really the process of it going through is really starting with a smaller screen experience. And then once we have that down, then yeah, let's start thinking about bigger screens, the bigger touch screens, because iPad apps tend to have slightly different metaphors as well. So even though it might translate over okay, it might not be ideal. So I'm sure there's loads of work that we can do on the iPad experience or a tablet experience.
Yeah. Again, this is progressive enhancement, progressive enhancement, progressive enhancement. Yeah. We start with the, the smaller screens and look at the bigger screens as, as progressive enhancements of the base. So, uh, th uh, Thank you very much. Um, I hope to see you guys. On, oh, wait, no, you, one more question? Go, go ahead. Um, so the question is, have we taken a look at what Joomla and WordPress have done? Um, I personally have not. Um, I've been looking at the sort of the, the web d uh, development community in general and not at what CMSs in particular have been doing. Um, but that's a great suggestion. Um, personally, I'm not going to have time, but I would love to see somebody who is maybe more familiar with WordPress who does like WordPress and Drupal sites to, to give input. Um, about some of those stuff. So I'd love to see that. Love to see that input. So thank you very much. Uh, there's a you know survey about what you thought about the talk, but uh, the, I don't really care if you trash us here or whatever, but what I really want to see is a lot of you show up on Friday. Yeah, if you guys could all turn up to the sprint yeah. on Friday, that'd be great because it's starting to get to the point where I'm starting to write PHP patches. <laughs> he and, has. And if you <laughs> see my PHP, it, it's dangerous. And it's important because yeah. you guys could all be working with that code <laughs> when Drupal 8 comes out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you.